Hi guys, it's Mac Million within the dark room with Mac Photos. Thanks for stopping by and joining me for this episode where today we're going to be discussing a topic that's not all that exciting, but I guarantee you it can make a tremendous difference in you building consistency, whether your photos are being displayed online or going to the printers. We're going to be discussing color spaces, sRGB, which is the industry standard versus Adobe RGB. I'm going to kind of uh, define those color spaces for you and share with you my experience when working with Adobe RGB. So let's hop on a, over to the other side and take a look. Hi guys, so I thought we'd kick things off by taking a look at or defining uh, what our color spaces are. The two color spaces we're looking at here are sRGB and Adobe RGB. Adobe is what we call or is considered an expanded color space. Why is it considered an expanded color space? Because everything we look at, when we are looking at our computer monitors, um, anything online, the industry standard, the industry format is sRGB. Anything that is captured or recorded in Adobe RGB has to be uh, converted down to sRGB. So what's the benefit of Adobe RGB? Adobe RGB is a newer color space format and um, we have not quite caught up to the uh, range uh, our color space of uh, Adobe RGB. There again, the internet format and the format of the majority of monitor displays that are uh, being used today, even with printing labs, the standard format is an sRGB format. Now, I know there's a great controversy that goes on uh, amongst photographers, videographers, and so forth uh, regarding uh, color space. Adobe being this wider uh, color space, it's the newest, it's the latest, it's the greatest. Uh, and I truly bought into this early on as a photographer. I thought, why not? You know, if I can capture this wider range of colors, why not record or capture? my images in Adobe RGB. Well, what I didn't know early on is that decision uh, created a lot of painstakingly wasted time and uh, headaches for me because as I was capturing images in Adobe RGB, working on those images on my computer display in an sRGB format, the Adobe RGB has to be converted down. So this means that my software has to do the conversion. So I would capture and edit images. They would look great on the display. And when I would upload them or look at them on my online portfolio, I'd be like, what is this? This is not what I saw, or this is not how I edited the colors. The colors, everything was completely off. So I would go back and recalibrate or change settings on my display to try the, to fix the problem that was occurring when the images were converted to sRGB. The, it was completely the wrong mindset or approach. But I did this for years. Uh, every month when my uh, computer system would alert me, it's time to recalibrate your monitor or display. It was such a pain and I dreaded it. So instead of every month, I'd push it out to every two months. Sometimes it'd go out to three months because I felt like, okay, everything's okay. I don't want to throw anything out of balance. And what I didn't realize is the problem lied in that I was capturing uh, my images and editing my images in an expanded color space. And the computer had to do its best judgment on how to convert uh, these colors 
down to sRGB. So I know this is very controversial with some photographers who will swear by Adobe RGB. Uh, others will swear by sRGB. I've done both and I'm just sharing with you my personal experience and the challenges I've had working in and with Adobe RGB. So let's take a look at what we're talking about here. Uh, the image on the screen, the inner triangular space represents sRGB, which keep in mind is the industry standard, the majority of monitors, printing labs work in an sRGB color space. The outer triangular area here is the Adobe RGB color space. I uh, will notice our blue points are the same. Our red points to the right here are the same. If we go back over to the blues and transition up uh, from our uh, blue tones up to the greens, we notice this expanded or wider color space between sRGB and Adobe RGB. Now this color space is wider, but um, quite a bit less than it is on the blue and green side. The widest range is going to be with the greens. So if we look at uh, our color space of sRGB and uh, our Adobe RGB, we'll see a much wider space in the greens. And if you ever go and look for uh, Adobe RGB, uh, capable monitors. One of the big selling points is that they're tremendous for uh, nature photographers because of this, because it does display that wider uh, aspect of greens. So perfect. There are not many R Adobe RGB monitor displays that are being used. Yes, they are available, but the reason is because even if you have an Adobe RGB capable monitor, the benefits of Adobe RGB ends as soon as that image is uploaded to the internet, be it to your website, your online portfolios, Facebook, Instagram. As soon as that image goes out, it's in an sRGB format. There again, uh, conversion has to take place and you're depending on a software to do that conversion for you. Recently, I upgraded my uh, monitor display. I did opt to stay with an sRGB monitor format. It does display in 100% sRGB. With that decision, I also converted all of my cameras to an sRGB format. Instead of capturing in Adobe RGB, all of my cameras are set to capture in an sRGB color space. And since I did that and made that transition, my life has been so much better. When it comes to uh, calibrating my monitors, it's a quick and easy process. When it comes to my images, uh, there's no conversion that needs to take place between Adobe RGB and sRGB. So when I edit my images, they display correctly when uploaded to the internet, to the website, portfolio, or social media. This has been, I, I kicked myself because I wonder why I had not done this previously. Now previously, there again, I fell under the mindset of, hey, Adobe RGB, it's the biggest, latest, greatest, baddest, it's the widest color space out there. But it lent it to and created um, every month, two months or so, it created such a headache for me when it came to calibrating my displays. So I hope uh, you've been able to take away something uh, or somewhat of an understanding as far as the differences in the ca color spaces, sRGB, Adobe, RGB. I'm not recommending or suggesting either or to you. I think it's important to understand the differences between the two. And hopefully sharing my experience with uh, you maybe alleviate some of the headaches 
uh, that you're seeing with your images. I'm often asked to uh, take a look at uh, other photographers' photos or their portfolios. And one of the things that stands out to me probably more than anything is I, I can take a look at an image and the first thing that pops in my head is that they probably need to calibrate their displays. Well, I hope this has been beneficial, and I look forward to seeing you the next time. Well, I hope this episode has been beneficial, and you've increased your, your knowledge and understanding of color spaces, and that you're going to be able to walk away and make an informed decision as far as the color space that's going to work best for you and your workflow. Until the next time, get out there, get shooting, and remember, make every shot count.